Hi everybody, Mr. Gallup here with another algebra video for you. Last lesson of the year, can you believe it? Yeah, I can. All right, anyway, we're talking about scatter plots. Scatter plots are a bunch of random points that you'll look at this graph of Michelle's bicycle trip and you'll notice that there's these random points all over the graph. They're, they're not in a straight line. So what we can do with that is interpret some information and make judgment calls about what future trips might be. Uh, for instance, if they asked you, hey, what's, um, you know, looking at this graph, uh, about how many uh, miles would Michelle ride if she was on her bike for 120 minutes? So you go to the time axis, 120 minutes is right here. And what you have to do is you have to sketch a, a line that basically cuts the points in half. That's what you're trying to do with a scatter plot, follow the general trend. And there's three different types of trends that you'll see. Uh, just to take a side trip here. Uh, one is there's a random assortment of points. It looks like a cloud. That is no correlation. There's no correlation here. You can't draw any conclusive uh, ideas based on that information given. All right? There's also positive correlation, which is like a general trend upward. Now, that line didn't cut it in half, but that is a positive correlation. And then we have here, we have, if we were to draw a line, it looks like we have a positive correlation from these data points. The last correlation that we offer is negative correlation. Okay, so as, sorry for that little line there, but as X increases, the Y is decreasing. So as X goes up, Y is going down. Our positive correlation, that was negative correlation, by the way. Our positive correlation, like we have in this problem, is that as X is going up, so is Y. And so hopefully that's obvious. So we were asking at 120 minutes, how long, or how many, I'm sorry, how, yeah, how far would she ride? So if we go up the 120 here, oops, I'm using the wrong thing. If we go up 120, this point, it looks like eh, about 30. I would say that she would ride for about 30 miles. We could also be asked to find an equation for that line. And oh boy, this goes back. You need to look up writing linear equations if you do not remember how to do this. But to write a linear equation for this graph, first off, we'll put the data in half. Let's say, how about, uh, yeah, how about this? In this case, it looks like my y-intercept is zero, and I think that's pretty fair. So I have a y-intercept of zero, so if we're talking about y equals mx plus b, b is zero. For x and y, you leave those alone. And now they're giving, it, we'll change this in a second, they're giving us different variables. Our slope, we have to find two points and determine the slope. I'm going to use this point right here, which is 20 comma 5. So that's 20 comma 5. And I'll pick another point. Let's use this one. This one looks like a good one. So that would be 140 comma 35. And remember, you're going to plug it into that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So these are all formulas that we worked with this year. And you're going to take 35 minus 5 over 140 minus 20. And it looks like you get 30 over 120, which is going to simplify to one fourth. So we should have y equals one fourth x plus zero. Now, m is on our x axis. So we're gonna replace that x with an m. We don't need to write the y intercept. And then our y axis is d. So we're gonna, this would be your equation that represents this graph. They're gonna try and trick you though. You might see like a negative slope. That would be for negative correlation. That is not what we have here. So you would not want to use that. Those are things to look out for. Now, everybody's going to get different points. Your, your slope should be close, okay? But it's not going to be precise because this is a line of best fit on this scatter plot. That's, that's the appropriate name for this line right here. It's a line of best fit. It is not the line of exact fit. So, you know, if you see a slope that's close to yours, like what I would do is I would take my slope, my one fourth here, I would turn it into a decimal, which is 0.25. I would look at the slopes if this was a multiple choice question and look at slopes that are close to that decimal value. If I saw like 1.3 or 0.4, I'm going to go with 0.4 as my option, not 1.3 because it's so far away from 
0 0.25. So these are close, not really that similar, but close enough. All right. Now what we can do from there is once you know this equation, or you have a rough idea of this equation, this D equals one fourth M, what you could do is say, well, you know what, what if she rode for 400 minutes? There's a couple ways you can do this. You could obviously extend the graph and you can extend this line and you can try and draw it. And some of you are going to be great artists and you can do that. I cannot, as you can see, my lines are wavy as it is. So I would not do that. I would plug that 400 into this equation. I would take y equals one fourth of 400 and say, oh, okay, one fourth of 400 is 100. It looks like at, um, at 400 minutes, she's wrote, or she rode 100 miles. And that seems to follow this trend. I mean, at 200 minutes, she rode about 40, well, she rode 45 miles. So yeah, 100 doesn't seem far off for 400 miles. You know, we're doubling this, so it's kind of like doubling this, maybe, you know, it would take a little bit. Again, it's a line of best fit. It's not completely accurate, but it's the best estimation you can give based on the data. So I hope that helps. I know that's a lot of stuff there, but uh, good luck.